Apple sold us a dream, a fast, affordable, revolutionary editing app that would change the game for creators. But over a decade later, we're still waiting. So now we have every major broadcaster on the planet relying on Final Cut Pro for um, mission critical content delivery day in and day out. Now these are a couple of the films that were edited on Final Cut Pro that were nominated for an Academy Award this year. We have a 94% customer satisfaction ratio. According to independent research, when the highest end of our marketplace, the broadcast and post professional, is choosing a nonlinear editor, they are overwhelmingly selecting Final Cut Pro. So, they leave Adobe and Avid. Well, they'd like you to believe that they're competing with us. The truth is, they're in a race for second place. What we want to do is we want to create great software. We're all about creating an incredible user experience and great software that you guys can use. So the next question is, of course, what's next? I'm sure that's really why you're all here. So now we're going to start unveiling a sneak peek. There's been a lot of talk around about what that might be, ranging from nothing at all to just a little incremental update to the existing application to a whole bunch of other interesting rumors about what we've been up to. But I get to be one of the people that shows you exactly what it is we've been up to, which is building a brand new version of Final Cut Pro. This is a rebuilt application built from the ground up, re-architected based on modern technologies and they, based on leveraging all of the experience we've had building the existing Final Cut since its inception in 1999. When Final Cut Pro X dropped in 2011, Apple called it the biggest leap forward in professional editing since the original Final Cut Pro. It was reimagined from the ground up. Magnetic timeline, background rendering, 64-bit performance, with a $299 price tag and no subscription. It was marked as fast, modern, and creator first. Not just for Hollywood editors, but for the new wave of filmmakers, YouTubers, and content creators. And for a lot of us, myself included, it delivered. It changed how we edited. It made us faster. It made editing fun again. So where's the lie? The lie isn't what Final Cut Pro was, it's what it could have been, and what Apple refused to let it become. Over the past 14 years, Apple added a few great things, rolls, multicam, HDR, and better color tools. But the core of Final Cut Pro hasn't really changed. Meanwhile, the rest of the industry has moved on in leaps and bounds. DaVinci Resolve added editing tools, AI tools, cloud collaboration, pro-level audio workflows on top of a pro-level color editor, all for free. And Adobe keeps updating Premiere with integration across its entire ecosystem. Even CapCut is doing things that Final Cut Pro can't. At this point, Final Cut is frozen. Still no real built-in motion graphics integration, like proper keyframing for all the parameters. The audio tools are lacking, no auto-ducking, no form of cloud collaboration and a lot of the effects feel like they're from 2011. And here's where it really hurts the most. We believe that Final Cut Pro could have been the standard for YouTubers. It was fast, clean, and powerful until you outgrow it. As everyone's needs grow, multiple editors, versioning, collaboration, real-time remote work, Final Cut just stays silent. Ask anyone that tries to scale a production team, a YouTube team, and you'll hear the same thing, that they had to switch to Premiere Pro or Resolve. Apple promised us a Lamborghini, but they never took off the training wheels and it still has bicycle brakes. It's sleek, it's fast, but it's not worth going the distance with. And one of the worst parts is that Apple doesn't tell us anything. No roadmap, no transparency, no real public facing development team. We get one major update every 12 to 18 months and it's usually a meh. Meanwhile, Blackmagic is running laps. Adobe is giving creators real tools and even indie developers are building features Apple should be leading with. Vision Pro, iPad Pro with M4, 
Where's the pro apps ecosystem to match all of this innovation? So what would it take to get creators running back to use Final Cut Pro again? Final Cut needs some serious must have features and a whole list of nice to haves to reach a tipping point, at least for Mac users. Here's a short list that I believe would turn things around pretty fast. The must haves would be AI caption with auto generated graphic titles, text based editing like cutting video from a transcript, remove silences and bad takes automatically, more AI driven effects, think motion tracking or object removal, easy cloud collaboration or version control, native keyframe improvements and better in-app animation tools. They should buy color finale and make pro color grading native. The ability to export LUTs directly from Final Cut Pro. Being able to add audio effects right onto roles. AI smart conform that actually works reliably. The music remix tool that's already on the iPad but needs to be on the desktop. An AI powered voice EQ like Auphonic that helps make great sounding audio without much effort. The nice to haves are live drawing tools like on the iPad, 3D camera tracker would be nice, a whole refresh stock filters and effects, and also an iPhone and Android companion app that works like CapCut but integrates with Final Cut Pro. And this is just a personal one. I believe that Apple could buy a company like Gling and give us a proper AI assistant editor. It would change the game overnight. And that's what I think it would take right now for people to consider switching back to Final Cut Pro and use it as a creative content tool. Not just another round of quiet updates and performance improvements, but a bold, clear investment in the creator community that helped build them. So yes, I do believe Apple sold us a lie. Do I feel that they genuinely believe that they would do it? Yes. But at some point over the last 14 years, they just walked away and not because Final Cut Pro wasn't revolutionary at the time, it's because they stopped believing in it. If you're a beginner or solo creator, there isn't anything easier to learn than Final Cut Pro. It's still amazing. But if you're serious about growth and about future proofing in a creative career, you may wanna start looking elsewhere. I definitely wanna hear from you. Are you still using Final Cut Pro? Have you switched? What would it take for you to come back? And if you want a deep dive on why creators are switching to Resolve, I got a video right here. As always, thanks for watching.